I'm sure Bob's probably got an Eternal Lodge thing or some shit worked out. I guess Friday's laundry day, man. Again. It amazes me what women will go out with in Tennessee. Can we smoke this show, Bob? No smoking? I hate a damn no smoking show. Half the crowd wants to smoke and they can't, so they're pissed, and the other half ain't got no sense of humor to start with. Some of those we want to breathe and live assholes. Are we going to be able to breathe? Fuck no, you ain't going to be able to breathe. It's a comedy club, for Christ's sake. You want to breathe? You got a check. That's why we all started smoking, so we could knock out the nursing home years. We wound up being the old fucker, Golden Corral, bitching about the salad bar. Those cucumbers just don't look fresh. They're not fresh. It's Golden Corral, you cheap bastard. It's $4.99 all you can eat. Get your tennis ball walker ass away from the buffet. Well, I don't want to sit here and pick on old handicapped people, but injured people shouldn't be at a damn restaurant. You got a doctor boot, pins in the ankle, pink gauze hanging out, damn it, stay home, get a pizza. My brother lost his damn left leg. I didn't take him out to eat the next night. You lay here, we'll bring you, bring you Chinese takeout. Yeah. Really? Sorry about getting that part in. But it's down on tobacco. The greatest four mines of World War II. Smoke. Roosevelt, smoke. Churchill, smoke. Eisenhower, smoke. Douglas MacArthur, smoke. Nicotine won World War II. Can we start smoking reefer in Vietnam? Got our ass wet. No. <laughs> well, we kind of won this last one, though, because they're smoking crack now. It's me. We're going to rape, rob, pillage, steal, shoot, plunder, and steal stereo the better we ever have. We may not whoop Ben Laden, but he won't have shit to listen to when it's over. What else? <laughs> You're talking to a bunch of John S. McCain voters. I can tell by looking at one of you. <laughs> my friends. <laughs> my friends. <laughs> They're voting for Beavis or some shit. <laughs> John McCain was in the military. Fuck Lee Harvey Oswald was in the military. <laughs> well, Benedict Arnold was in the military. Jimi Hendrix was a paratrooper. <laughs> My cousin was in Vietnam. Hell, he's framing houses in North Georgia. I don't want that ass being president. He might make a pretty good FEMA director. As long as he never shows up, he knows quite a bit about judging show horses. Which, of course, was W's criteria for FEMA director. The only FEMA I saw at Katrina was Kafima Jackson. She was holding a big armload of huggies going, where are those motherfuckers? I felt bad for the people in Mississippi lost their houses. But I didn't really feel all that bad about it, because hell, I almost lost a house on a blackjack table in Biloxi, Mississippi. Most people didn't give a fuck. I didn't see a $2,000 credit card and a Red Cross truck waiting on my ass when I limped out of Mississippi. And I specifically remember when I doubled down around 11 and that Mississippi woman hit me with a two. I think I said, dear God, if you ever get a chance to blow these assholes away with a hurricane. <laughs> well, I'm starting to think it was me. <laughs> the Harris at Cherokee gets hit by a locust. You'll know it was me. Listen to my ass on the let it ride table over there. Son. Sitting around feeling sorry, a bunch of Mississippi fuckers. We're just getting some Goodman, Schwerner, and Cheney revenge going down there a little bit. All of a sudden, they're not so badass down there. Shit brought that up. In front of white supremacists. See, I'm from 
Georgia. We hate Florida people. I hope Al Gore's right. I hope global, war global warming hits tomorrow and that damn state's underwater tomorrow. <laughs> Why? Because Georgia people grew up our whole lives. Oh my God, we're going to get to go to Florida. We take a float, put it on top of the car. Oh, we're going to drive to Florida. Get there. You got a hotel room? Yeah, they're $100. Unless you want to be near the water. Then they're four hundred fucking dollars. Oh no, we don't want to be near the water. We want to sit in a hot ass asphalt parking lot with a float on top of the car and finish up these Picard logs we got in Valdosta. <laughs> and then a hurricane comes, and they evacuate to Georgia. Oh my God, do you have a hotel room? Yeah, they're a hundred dollars. Unless you want to be away from the water. And then. And then we're gougers. <laughs> Anytime Georgia, Tennessee people making any money, it's gouging. Right? Yeah, we got tourism, involuntary tourism. That's what we call it. They have to stop here before they get to Florida. We have to get gas money? I guess we'll have to stop at the fireworks stand. In Tennessee, you buggers will go after some fireworks. <laughs> Knoxville, shit, y'all got more cars. I don't remember having this many, many cars. I just went to the subway, took two hours to get home. Tennessee. Fred Thompson, Mr. Tennessee. I'm gonna come out and act like somebody's gonna vote for me for president. Carry like 2% of the vote or some shit. Fred Thompson. This is an actor. My ass, you get two lines at the end of Law and Order. Did we get him? Let's go get dinner. <laughs> the same two lines he had in Days of Thunder. Remember that? We're going to go get dinner. <laughs> See, Howard Baker would have been a great president. Y'all's old senator. You're too young to remember, probably. He's the one got Nixon. I want to know what you knew, what the fuck you knew, and when the hell you knew it. And Fred, run and get me some coffee while the president's telling me where he knew. Do you want me to get dinner? <laughs> Fred was his gopher back in the day. Well, we lost the crowd. Oh shit, the cheesecake came out. Yeah, that's gonna help. I can't get a waiter worth a fuck anymore. Those them dates ought to be getting here any minute. I don't know where the hell they are. They're hung up or some shit. It's the lonely table over there. There's something like the Cartwrights or some shit. Isn't it? What a woman within a hundred mile radius of the Ponderosa. Here it is. <laughs> Youngsters, how old are you, sir? 26. Two? 22? 26. You still don't know shit. <laughs> You're in here looking for a co-signer right now, ain't you, sir? 26. Look, we got underwear. 26. Probably on. How old are you, sir? Or did me and him we used to do a thing called go outside and play. It was like a weird thing. You lived in a house. And there was a road in front of your house you could actually cross without a booster seat or an actual bicycle fucking helmet. Yeah. And there were people who lived in that house who actually knew you. When you'd knock on the door and go outside and play with their kid and it got dark. With a thing called a step. And then your mama would come to the door and say, it's time for a thing that we used to call dinner. It was way back when women would do a thing called cook. <laughs> and there'd be like four or five pots on the stove. And there's some lasagna they were proud of in the Kroger or some shit. We used to ride our bikes to the damn store by our damn selves. Be six, seven, eight miles away from home. Parents didn't give a damn. Where are them kids at? Hell, I don't know. Glad they're gone. <laughs> be nine years old. Want to get you a cart in the Marlboro 100s? <laughs> The Penthouse Forum magazine. And they got the story, you boys need some lighters with them cigarettes. You know, we got Daddy's lighter. We well, better change clothes when you get home, they'll smell smoke. You're gonna think that we used to call it an ice weapon. That's something they quit issue on about 26 fucking years ago, sir. 26? What you gonna do, bitch? A little 22-year-old to whip my ass in a modest monthly shop parking lot the other day. 
47 trying to get a Suburban across four lanes of traffic. He pulls up in the Fast and Furious. <laughs> he can't drift yet. What you gonna do, bitch? So before we start, I'm still living 1975. I'm still a son of a bitch. You might beat my ass, but I'm gonna win in court. I don't need these teeth, but I can catch up some car payments. <laughs> you get over 40 and fighting shit stops. Not because you won't win, because you stay in the hospital twice as long as the kid whose ass you beat. Hey, did you hear Fred's in the hospital? No, I didn't hear shit. He's been there four weeks. What happened? He picked the fuck out of a 22 year old. I hate to hear that. Let me explain something to you, sir. <laughs> me and him, him, uh, him. We grew up in cars with no air conditioning. Our entire childhood was spent with our ass melted to a vinyl sink. 100 degree heat, never once in a while your daddy'd have mercy on you and open little triangle windows up. Little air in you. you had one speaker and a steel dashboard. That fucker didn't go. <laughs> it went e e e e e e e e e e So I ring the fire by Johnny Cash was such a hit. We all knew that song sucked, but we were relating to it. Our ass was on fire. We take every damn kid in the neighborhood and pack them in the back of a thing called a station fucking wagon. There was a well-designed vehicle with a back seat pointing the opposite direction so five-year-olds could shoot birds at troopers. Have them packed in the back, laying in the window of the car. Little seat belts. Somebody gave a fuck about kids back in them days. You drop a kid out of a station wagon in the early 70s, hey, just turn around and go get his ass. Never even saw a seat belt. Was, what, 15 years old? Only time you ever saw one is when you dropped a quarter under the seat, be looking for it. I can't find it, Diddy. Something's in the way. What's this? Pack that shit back down in there. That's gonna fly around and hurt somebody. The only good news about a station wagon was it didn't. If you broke down between here and Chattanooga, you had enough wood on the side to keep a good fire going. Where are we, Diddy? <laughs> We're not near Bowwater. <laughs> Somebody will take a damn Bowwater and give that fucker back to the Indians. <laughs> Don't take them, make this into a casino. Damn, that sweet water, Tennessee. It ain't really all that sweet, just sweeter as shit, Bowwater. <laughs> I'm a professional fisherman. Well, get in that fucking lake and boil a fish out. Let's see that. Damn. 26. Did you play Little League, sir? Did you get a little plastic ass trophy for participating? Then, then you His mama drove you to practice. Didn't even have your name on it. He just mailed it to you. We didn't even have a sports banquet. Dude. We didn't get no damn trophy. Not as you hit one offense, won a championship. It's a marble ass trophy. On the bottom, too heavy to mail. <laughs> Big tall, damn made out of lead and mercury. <laughs> Painted in China. And your mama had never seen one, you know. Is that a trophy? Let me lick it. <laughs> so everybody in our age is all out of our damn minds. We all got them mercury ass fillings and shit. So you got them white ass fillings. Open your mouth up, they're little white ass fillings. We got swamp fillings. <laughs> Open your mouth, it's like a damn navy swamp. Or okay. We used to go to school, kids. Put your math books up, get your science book out. Get your science book out. Get your mercury out. Uh-oh, yours dripped off the desk. Better pick that up. Oh shit, you got some in your eye. Let's test the properties of mercury. Let's throw it against an asbestos wall. <laughs> Nobody give a fuck about us. We're <laughs> gonna have air conditioning 
in school. You had to push that damn fan. Remember that damn fan? Damn. You didn't see a TV till Neil Armstrong stepped on the fucking moon or something. Like a media lady pushing the TV. It's all dusty and shit. Anyhow. Going to something else. See, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You see the new one? Yeah. You haven't seen the new one? We you puss? <laughs> the new Texas, our Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in 1974. It didn't have a drop of blood in it. Scared the fuck out of us. <laughs> it's like you had to like reach over and pick your fuck up. was crippled. He wasn't handicapped. It was 1974. Fucker was crippled. <laughs> handicapped didn't come out to Carter in 76. Got the, the blues parking spot in the van and everything. He was crippled. Somebody's running after him with a pole and chainsaw on somebody else's face. Got a wheelchair going through the woods and shit. Oh, damn, hit a stump and a roof. Oh. Didn't know why it was happening. It was just happening. You had to deal with it. Your Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he had some sort of a bacterial infection in his nose and he caused his nose to fall off and the kids at school treated him terribly and they didn't understand what he was going through psychologically and his mother was a single mom working at the slaughterhouse and she lost her insurance and her pension and it was George Bush's fault because that fucker's from Texas. <laughs> White boys in a dangerous ass neighborhood at three in the morning putting gas in his car. You know, his ass is a little tight. <laughs> Cadillac pulls up with a black guy in it. You hear, you'll never find bum bum but I'm home. as long as you live. Someone who loves you tender like I do. Then he pull away. Another Cadillac pull up. Everybody making it top, we gonna stomp dinner and hit it all night. And the neighborhood. Gonna feel alright, gonna dump. Now, it's three in the morning, you're in a dangerous ass neighborhood, white boy, putting gas in your car, and you hear <laughs> And you go, oh, fuck, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I got a gun to go up the bar, and a baseball bat in the back seat. If it gets too thick, I can always light this nozzle with this Zippo. <laughs> We're going to heaven, but it's going to feel like hell for a minute. <laughs> and then you look, and it's your nephew. <laughs> well, what up, motherfucker? What up? The white boy licking his lips and still on sand. Still on sand. What the fuck's wrong with you? Black people never scared me a bit. My pulse don't change around black people. White people acting like black people scares the fuck out of me. Well, let's don't go down that road, sir. I'm on the black people's side. I'm tired of fucking white people. I'm sick of white people. I've been in comedy business, country comedy business 25 years. I've seen all the white fuckers I want to see. I was hoping this crowd would be Mexican tonight. Oh, the Mexican ladies? We got white boy legs, man, in the front. You girls could have been over here. Who set this show? Nah, I'm sick of white people. You don't get tired of white people. Work on a house about two years. Do an addition on the front of your house. Watch white guys come over disguised as construction people. When it's over, you'll hate white people. We talk a good game. Oh, you must not call us. Hell, I did call you. I called white ass plumber. Don't you the yellow pages under W. White ass plumber. Try to get a white guy on the phone. Can I speak to somebody that remotely knows anything about anything? I'm 
sorry, he not here right now. But if you make your name and number, I can get him on his paper. Hey, still at work. They go, man, it's 11.30 at night. Booker's on a cell phone getting a lap dance somewhere, man. Your husband sucks, man. White guy's got a beeper in a cell phone. He'll drive around in a company truck lining up jobs. Hell, we're covered up. Shit, we about got all wet and damn do. I can't believe I'm over here looking at this right now. Damn, we we'll lose money on that. We are covered down up. Oh, yeah, you're covered up from Taco Bell rappers. That's what you're covered up in. When's the last time you seriously saw a white guy with a hammer in his hand out sweating somewhere? When's the last time you broke a sweat, sir? Six months. Don't sit here and bullshit me. Who actually does the majority of the construction work in the United States of America? Let's all say it together. The Mexican guys. That's what actually does it. It may not be in Knoxville yet, but it's coming. Wait till you see the wave of impalas I passed in Dalton, Georgia. Be here before the show's over. You want anything done right at your house, you get a Mexican man to show up at your house. He gonna show up, you gotta go pick him up. He's waiting on your ass out there. Him and 200 friends of his hiding behind a grocery store somewhere, begging to go to damn work. There's always some white ass cop with a crew cut and a flat jacket. What the hell is going on with your damn border patrol? You drive right by a white guy with a cardboard sign says, I won't do shit, please give me a dollar. Well, he's a, he's a citizen. Even those cops' guns are going further and further up into their armpit. I watch a lot of police chase shows. Henry County, Georgia. Someone has just stolen a 1986 Toyota, and the men and women of law enforcement are not going to be happy until that motherfucker's dead or in prison. <laughs> you go, it's an 86 Toyota. Let him go. The owner of the insurance company don't want that bitch to get back. Let's start rolling in a pasture and pull, kill a poor cow. White guy, he has his name on the side of a truck. Man, drew a pretty guy, a logo on his shirt, much his truck, got some cards, he's bonded, he's got a web page. He tell me what he can't do. Now that right there, now. Well, I just don't know about that right there. You got a Mexican man working for you, you look at him and you go, and he goes, when the shit gets done, he's gone. White guy wants to tell you a long story. Now, I know the contract said we'd be finished on Saturday. Well, my little boy made the All-Stars. They got a ball game Wednesday night. If they win that game, we may not finish for six months. <laughs> Mexican man wants three things. Sub sandwich all the way, a large cup, and I think you want this fucking hole. <laughs> think about it. Name me one thing. Thousands of years old, still standing, that a white guy ever built. Stonehenge, God bless you, sir. Could have held off on that another 20 seconds. <laughs> in drama in high school, they taught us a thing called the pregnant pause, sir. For the longer you let it sit, the funnier that shit'll get. If you, of course, weren't a fag in drama like me, you were probably building a birdhouse in wood shop or something. But you're right, Stonehenge. Twelve rocks standing up, six in between, and to this day, you don't know what the fuck it's for. <laughs> There's a white guy at a pyramid. Why? Because it had to be exact. Say, white guy at a pyramid. Hell, them rocks look close enough. Shit will cock it. <laughs> Let's get some lunch. I actually think Stonehenge was a couple of white boys taking a shot at a pyramid. <laughs> Got about 12 rocks drug up there. Fuck it, let's build some kind of temple or something. We got some Mexicans here, we got a roof on this damn thing. I bet it turns out it was a concession stand at a fucked up racetrack or something. NASCAR fans in here, no? Perfect example of what I'm talking about. It's time to go to Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol? You damn right we're going to damn Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol? You damn right we're going to damn Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol? You damn right we're going to damn Bristol. Wednesday night they get pimento cheese sandwiches together. 
Get 12 cases of beer, make sure you get four bags of ice. They're traveling Thursday. Get set up Thursday night. Qualifying is Friday. Bus race is Saturday. Rail race is Sunday. It rains. Oh, fuck, we're staying till Monday. <laughs> Takes Tuesday to get home. Then Wednesday, you got to get ready to go to damn Talladega. That's one week. About 350,000 white fuckers didn't do shit. <laughs> the next time you go to Bristol, if you see a Mexican sitting next to you, I'll give you $5. <laughs> they're taking our jobs. No, they're not. They just don't give a damn about Greg Bippo. <laughs> Neither do we. Indiana drive. It's just we'll need some more of that bullshit. I'm a Dale Jr. fan. Well, since he left his stepmom on his table, which already tells me he might have more balls than his daddy ever had. <laughs> don't be talking about Dale Sr., motherfucker. You don't say nothing about Dale Sr. You don't say nothing about Hank Sr. or Jr. You don't say shit about Bear Brunt, Johnny Majors. They're not saying nothing about Ronnie Van Zandt. You damn sure better not say nothing about Robert E. fucking Lee. <laughs> now, if Lane Kiffin goes to Pitt and gets his ass handed to him, they fire him on the spot. He can't ride home on a team bus. <laughs> Robert E. Lee went to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Him and General Longstreet got their ass handed to him. Stood there at the trees. I'm so proud of those boys, boys up on that hill, General. Well, if you're so proud of them, why don't we get on a horse and go up there and fucking help them? <laughs> oh, no, we'll stay here at the trees and report back on what happened. <laughs> General Hood lost a arm and a leg in battle, Chickamauga. Lee lost the front and backyard. <laughs> Quit the war a year and a month before it was over. <laughs> We've lost the crowd. <laughs> I can't believe we drove all the way down here to hear this motherfucker bad mouth Robert E. Lee. <laughs> football coaches are basically like Civil War generals. My least favorite coach, Steve Spurrier from South Carolina. He used to be in Florida. He'd run the church, he'd run the them, he'd run the score up in a church league game, you know what I'm saying? He basically stands around with a lesbian golf hat with that look on his face. Now Steve Spurrier won the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, when all the black guys were in Vietnam. FSU. Yeah. Not because he's a great winner, because he's a tremendously classy loser. They'll say, Coach, you sucked out there today. We did up, we did up, but we got good kids. My quarterback couldn't keep nothing on his stomach. He had diarrhea at halftime to get into a bottle of Kea Peck, take props, stuff on the football track of that. His mom gave it to him in teaspoons. He's a good woman. He's a good kid. Coach, your team stole half the shirts out of a Dillard's. They did up, they did up. But they're good kids. They was trying to get their grandmama something for Christmas and didn't realize they were in the men's department. If we, if we pay these players more, we wouldn't have to be worried about them stealing stuff out of the back of the book. Tennessee. Peyton Manning can kiss my ass, sir. Mr. Happy Feet, Peyton Manning. Mr. Watch yourself run onto the field. Yeah. Uh, 15 rib protectors. You couldn't hurt that bugger if you shot it. <laughs> Comes out telling everybody what to do. If I was his lineman, I'd say, fuck you, you asshole. I was in practice too. I read the playbook. I got 130 IQ myself. And when that big guy tries to hit you, I'm gonna hit him. And if he gets around me, he tries to hit you, you're gonna slide. <laughs> Look up at the video and go, Diddy's gonna be mad. Diddy's gonna be mad. <laughs> I think Peyton Manning is a humble, arrogant bastard. <laughs> now, I like his brother, Eli Manning, I like him. He reminds me of me. 
he'll fuck up and throw an interception. Reminds me of me. I don't like him. I like his daddy. I just don't like Peyton Manning. There's a lot of shit about Tennessee I don't like. <laughs> we just ain't got time to cover it all. See, I'm from Georgia. We was trying to steal half y'all state when we were in that drought down there. <laughs> I think Tennessee might actually be in Georgia. <laughs> you know that place in Chattanooga where you're in Georgia and Tennessee and you're in Georgia and Tennessee and you're in Georgia again and but you're in Nashville. <laughs> Hell, when you got a gun in the car, you know, I'm legal. Oh shit, I'm breaking the law. I'm legal. I'm fucking breaking the law. I'm legal. Anyhow, my wife watched that Food Network with Paula Dean. Y'all know her? Hi, y'all. Hi, y'all. I'm Southern as a chicken. That woman's like some sort of leftover Confederate spy or something. <laughs> whose job is to poison as many Michigan women with a bunch of southern food that doesn't exist. Well, she makes up shit. Today we're gonna make a, a cat shit pork chomp. We're gonna put eight pounds of butter in it. Get y'all's blood pressure up about 800 over 200. Now thanks for killing my uncle, Paula. Now you go to her house for Christmas, you wouldn't have egg nog, you'd have egg club. Today we're gonna make some barbecue ribs that have fallen off the fucking bone. I don't want my ribs falling off a damn bone, I want a bone and a rib. If I don't want a bone and a rib, I'd have got pulled apart. Or one of them mint ribs, remember those? See, they ain't never made you stomach, that bullshit. We used to get those once a year in the 70s, and pick a rib. Everybody in this room's had one uncle at one time or another ran to a secret crock pot. You need to try some of these son of bitches right You need to try some of these son of bitches right here. Now that right there will fall off the fucking bone. Now it's cause you boiled it before you cook it. That's why I'll fall off a damn bone. Give me a bow and arrow. Let's kill a deer. Throw it on the fire. Let's see if you can get that fucker to fall off a bone. These Southerners tickle me because we always say the same shit. You always hear something somebody's running around, get her done, get her done. I've heard that and it makes my ass hurt. <laughs> well, Larry the Cable Guy don't give a fuck about you, sir. I'm worried sick about you. <laughs> He's trying to make a payment on a Learjet. I'm trying to make a payment on a Lear truck cover. <laughs> You can't go to a meat and three restaurant without some old lady. You get up, you know, you get turnip greens. Ma'am, I'll get the mashed potatoes and turnip greens. You want some pepper sauce to go on them grain? <laughs> the lady, of course, I want fucking pepper sauce on the grain. <laughs> what, we in Michigan? <laughs> Southerners. Is Dog the Baby Hunter still on TV? Because every time I try to find him, I don't know, uh, like another cousin turned out to be an Aryan Nations or some shit. <laughs> they pray and cry more than Jim and Tammy Baker on that damn show. <laughs> Fire or skip bail, that's who I want chasing me, though. <laughs> who is it? Well, it's either the cops or the bass player from Molly Hatchet. <laughs> He's here with a roller derby woman and two Ferris wheel ticket takers. <laughs> And so it'll just about ruin Hawaii for you. you know? <laughs> She's one of the few women in the world who can actually fuck up Dollywood. <laughs> the Lord knows that ain't easy to do. It was his son's girlfriend. He made a racial slur or something. So over apologizing. Deep down, I'm a brother. Deep down, I'm a black man. I want to be buried in a slave cemetery. <laughs> right now, I can't call my mother-in-law a bitch without being buried in a fucking pet cemetery. <laughs> Now I can't call my gay uncle a flaming fag without being cremated on a Bravo channel or something. If you're gonna say stupid shit, just do it. Don't be changing funeral arrangements over it. When black people live as slaves, they don't want to wake up at the rapture next to your ass. Who's the white dude dressed like an Indian? I said some stupid shit about y'all on Discovery Channel, bruh. 
I guess we're the only ones that actually watch Dog the Bounty Hunters. <laughs> well, we've lost the crowd. <laughs> well, uh, what, ma'am? You've been on the interstate lately. Have I been on the interstate? Are, are you trying to lead me into a joke, ma'am? <laughs> One thing you have to understand, man, once I do it and record it on a record, a lot of times I forget it. Unless I hadn't wrote nothing in a while, then I'll do the same shit. <laughs> Sir, if you can't control your date, damn it, get her out. <laughs> She's just mad because I don't like Peyton Manning's ass. <laughs> Mr. Frankenstein head. Commissioner, if you retire and come back, you have to start till you're 65. <laughs> I don't give a damn if you're hurt. I don't care if you got rectal bleeding. <laughs> you put a lot of oxygen tube out of your nose, get some pads, get a buck in the huddle. <laughs> You've thrown for 13,000 miles. You've thrown 5,000 touchdowns. We can't possibly trade you. You're the only person here that knows as much about football as anybody. Get your ass in the hut. So I do the Pac-Man Jones. I wouldn't have fired him. I'd have made him start till he was 70. You're playing quarterback. You're gonna play quarterback so long, they're not even gonna remember what a Pac-Man was. They're gonna be calling you Missile Command Jones. But I'm an ass. See a lot of you people. You only my job is coming here and tell you a bunch of jokes. You know what my real job is? To be a bigger dick than you are. Go <laughs> around my way home. I'm glad I hooked up that hillbilly son of a bitch. You might run around with a white supremacy haircut and bad Bermuda shorts, but you're not as bad as that fucker. Then you get laid later, sir. You'll see my name on a sign out there in about six months. Well, I got laid last time I saw that age, so. <laughs> and that is my job. You're welcome. But you fellas gonna have to bring me something to work with here. I can't do it on the damn side. Help me help you. We'll get the guitar. I mean, I like country music in here. Huh? Well, if you don't like it, you damn sure better start liking it. About the only thing I can play. Gave my roadie the night off. Her groupies are sick. I know it needs women pledge. <laughs> Can we turn the guitar on? Hello? See my work here? Hello? <laughs> well, if Bill Wingball was here, this shit wouldn't be happening. Need a Mexican sound man, that's what we need. <laughs> and they still ain't here. Can a waiter do me a favor and go over there to number two on that soundboard and push on? Or get somebody that works here? <laughs> well, I don't know, I'm just not feeling the music anymore. <laughs> Drink and bank start running. <laughs> These rappers pretty much got public school teachers intimidated at this point. What the fuck you mean that don't rhyme? Okay, fine, it rhymes. <laughs> Gets any hotter, Bob, I'm gonna have this baby right here. <laughs> My water's gonna break. And these girls are gonna win a wet t-shirt contest. <laughs> Last time I wear 
Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> Skinner fans in here? Skinner fans, sir. Needle and spoon, indeed. You're singing. Here we go. Searching for a Michigan rock star, a kid rock, Bob Ritchie, last seen with a short man in a black rattlesnake hat. Did y'all know Donnie Van Zandt's too short to do it? He can't do it. Johnny's too much of a puss. He's, he's glad to have a job. <laughs> Ronnie Van Zandt would have beat the fuck out of him. Scattered songs in the same. Do that up I always love weird chords. This is what I call a soap opera chord. This is what a, what a soap opera is just about to go to commercial. You're not fucking Bill, are you? La Playa. Me gusto mucho until I went down there and couldn't get a hotel room in Florida. Y'all legal? <laughs> Just play with you girls. I don't give a damn if y'all are. ain't legal. Y'all can stay. Come to my house and stay. I like out of town women. I was married to an Israeli woman for about 14 years, which pretty much went over like a fart and a diamond helmet when that happened. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll just go on to the shit that works. All Travis Tripp songs, you know what I'm saying? songs in the circle. Trailer girls, and we love Greg, we love him. 
We know him. But Mount Greg don't know his bass player. Get the buck away from here. <laughs> See, you're 26. You don't remember rock and roll. It's over. You missed it. Sorry. <laughs> Still waiting on Van Halen to come back. <laughs> and he's had a hip replacement half a ton. Yeah, that's going to be a good job. Valerie Bertinelli won't even sweep with his ass anymore. The only reason David Lee Roth's still in the band because he's a certified paramedic. <laughs> Calm down over there, ladies. I don't know any Los Lobos. Wrong <laughs> key. Sorry. the words to that shit. Go 
trout, some moose stew, and a screw of caribou. <laughs> Suddenly Bill wants to lay pipe in Alaska. <laughs> you know, General you know, Clinton went up to Obama and said, if you'll make my wife Secretary of State and keep her ass out of the country for eight months out of the year, I swear to God, I'll can't play for you the last two weeks. <laughs> And Obama said, uh, we'll look at her record. Uh, we know that she's very qualified. Uh, we know she was a very worthy opponent. And we may very well tell her to go fuck herself. No impressionist. Start to get the rhythm right, no? You go up, you go up one more time. You go up one more time, and then you go up and down. <laughs> no, you don't want to mess with Michelle Obama. She's tough enough to whoop Ricky Tidwell's mama. See her out standing on the White House steps with the massive forearms and the big bicep. <laughs> I know exactly what the press corps is thinking. She's two inches shorter than a Abraham Lincoln. Got a dress on tighter than a Swiss Army knife and a booty that shakes like Barney Fine. <laughs> no, you don't want to mess with Michelle Obama. I can't think of something to rhyme with comma. <laughs> You know, she don't take crap off Barack, she'll cut his wind off with a side headlong. <laughs> no, you don't want to fuck with Michelle Obama. Well, <laughs> working on that one. Good looking Spanish women in the third row. Wanted to take them home after the show. Where did my lotion go? This song will have to be short and white and slow. Where did my lotion go? They'll probably jerk this off the Bob and Tom show. Where did my lotion go? Second verse. Watching the news on the hotel TV. The weather lady, she's staring at me. She said it's freezing, but her body rocks. I should have packed an extra pair of socks. Where did my lotion go? What y'all want to do Friday? Let's go listen to a sweaty middle-aged man sing masturbation songs. That sounds like fun. We'll get some chicken wings. Sure don't go over. We gotta play that long ass song. This is when my hair starts looking like Bella Lugosi. Hurdy string, Eddie. Hurdy string. You may ever see Ed Wood? Is it just them Duke's fucking hazard to you people here? <laughs> Who would be string AD? Here's my here's my guy that goes into the waffle house. About say anything, he just walks in and goes. And then he'll come out of the bathroom and go, were y'all there Friday? And the waitress will go, no, were you? And he leaves. They got a hair like Grandpa from the Monsters. Who is this thing, Eddie? Eddie Munster. 
She's the only one got the joke. God bless you, man. Come up with something real cute. Nobody gets it except me and you. Ma'am, you're hooked up with a white supremacist. <laughs> now, where are you from, sir? White supremacist, man, where are you from? <laughs> Don't be a puss, sir. Where are you from? <laughs> Pennsylvania. See, y'all beat our ass in the Civil War. So, you know, don't be a puss. I'm from here now. In case someone snaps and doesn't like someone from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania people kick a Tennessee man's ass. Bunch of coal miners up there. Bunch of coal miners in Tennessee. They're all in West Virginia. What the hell do y'all do here? We work at Toyota, motherfucker. Green hair and shit. Walk around with green hair going, Elvira. Elvira. My heart on fire. Only the Spanish pe people know the song. We hip and oom shut the oom shut the mouth. called country music. It was a thing they used to play on the radio. It was completely uncool. There wasn't a damn thing cool about real country music. You'd hear Loretta Lynn. We did the work. We worked. It was hard. And then we slept because we were tired. <laughs> completely serious. It was totally real. There was nothing fake, phony about it. She was married to Mooney. She didn't run off with whoever was playing quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. She was married to Dooley's ass. Do, do fix fucking cars and shit. She didn't run off with no quarterbacks. Why? Country music. See, anyone, me and maybe this Mexican lady is the only people voted for a Barack Obama in this damn room. <laughs> See, but I remember when Charlie Pride's ass won Entertainer of the Year in 1970 in country music. Charlie Pride, the Kenny Chesney of 1970. Kenny Chesney. Oh, I wonder where Renee, Renee Zellweger left. I wonder why. Because you're making beach videos with no women in it. That's why she left. Who's that new girlfriend? Well, it's a private relationship. I don't want to keep that private. Keep my relationships private. Not when you used to cut check Tim McGraw, you didn't keep that private. Who wants that fucker do that? You remember that? Is that Billy Kidd? Billy? Round of applause for Billy Kidd on the radio. There he is. There wasn't one of y'all be in here if it wasn't for him. God bless you. Shit, I'd have been sitting here talking to this fucker the whole night. I think like a radio signal got fucked up, fucked up got over on the Spanish channel. These girls said that. He knows what I'm talking about, all that cup checking Tim McGraw and shit from the camera. You know what I'm saying. See, these people don't really want to hear the truth. They want to be bullshit. No, 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 you don't. I just told you the truth about Peyton Manning, y'all booed me the whole way. All right. Hey, man. Now let's 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 don't bullshit each other, man. Let's be honest here. Let's be honest, okay? If somebody asks Peyton Manning, they say Peyton. We can give you a million dollars and you can go hang out in New York City tonight. Or we'll give you a million and you can go hang out at the, the old World's Fair Tower in Knoxville. Which one do you think he'd go with? No, he wouldn't. He'd be watching a 49ers game with 
Kenny Chesney. <laughs> I'm about to pass out. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm sure Peyton Manning is a very nice person. I'm sure he is. Have you ever met him, Ma'am? No. <laughs> I have met him. What, ma'am? I'm like you and I haven't met you. Yes, you have, ma'am. I'm sweating like a... in front of you. I mean, this, this is as close to sex as we've got. If I could smoke, it'd be like we slept together. Well, see, you can meet me, ma'am. I ain't hard to meet. After the show's over, you walk out there at the bar, I'll be sitting out there damn, knocking out four bottled waters. <laughs> you know, and I won't go. I won't have any guards around me. <laughs> I sucked in football. <laughs> but I'm a hell of a lot funnier than fucking Peyton Manning. <laughs> Although I thought the tips from Peyton Manning commercial was pretty funny. I thought that was a pretty funny one. I thought that was funny. <laughs> we're wasting too much time. Let's see, let's, let me play this song for this lady. Here's a song I wrote in Jellicoe, Tennessee. Well, the church burned down and no one knew what Pentecost Baptist was going to do. The brimstone got so that gum hot they burned up a church bus in the parking lot. In a panic, the Reverend Dr. White called up an action member that hadn't lived right. He owned Joe's beer joint right across the fence. It's the same Joe that got the hiccups. I get the same Joe's he preached again. He said, I don't really want to be a hypocrite. I got a Sunday school class. It's about that fence. We're all excited about revival. We can been moved by the Spirit, so to speak. With all the souls we saved and money we spent, we thought God told us to sell that tent. And I got a famous evangelist supposed to come. I run out of chairs. Will you loan us some? Joe said, well, just use the whole dang place. Ain't I on a jukebox, Amazing Grace? I ain't supposed to be open because of them blue laws. Look tonight, it's all right with y'all. Richard says, well, I reckon it'd be okay. The good Lord works in mysterious ways. He's gonna talk about Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. I reckon I can do it from the DJ booth. At the First Baptist Bar and Grill. It's the only church in the Bible belt that smells like a whiskey still. Now when the sinners finish one more round, we'll have dinner on the ground and go inside. And pray we don't get killed. <laughs> the evangelists came with a well dressed choir. They showed up around happy hour, looked around the joint, and didn't take it real well, so the white ministry has gone to hell. It's Mills that taught youth Sunday school, and two Dickens in the back room shooting pool were sharing the Lord with the Jim Bean rep, teaching Ms. Mills some wine dance steps. Every white was reading from the book of Luke to a tall drunk trucker about to build that John 368 memorized, trying to dry him out to get him baptized. Song's too long, man, we got a white sweat. Hold on one second. <laughs> Elvis had somebody to do it for him. <laughs> the evangelist yelled about the lights and the bears and white. Can't save any souls in here. This place ain't nothing but a den of sin. Ain't the kind of place Baptist ought to be in. Richard said, well, we don't really need Joe here. You didn't do a very good job last year. You only saved one sinner, us, Todd McGuire. He's a little son bets up a church on fire. <laughs> but he's 26 years old and he's sitting in the third row and he's got three friends and they got fucking dates. At the first Baptist bar and grill. throw your ass out. <laughs> the first Baptist bar in Grail. Yeah, three minutes. <laughs> Pissed at 
me in three minutes and you took up two of them, ma'am. <laughs> We'll do, we'll do that. Jeff Martin's gay! Jeff, well, let me change keys. <laughs> this is instant talent. Jeff Gordon's gay. Jeff Gordon's gay. And at least that's what them ornery Earnhardt fans always say. They swear he's using Vaseline on the 24 Chevrolet. Jeff Gordon's gay. He must be gay.
guess I'm tired of all my crazy ass telling me every move to make. I'm tired of Mark Stewart's ass telling me how to bake a cake. But I'm just about had my fill of Dr. Fucking Phil. Tired of looking at Tiger's ass and Shaquille O. Fucking Neal. And Paris Hilton could fuck up a county fair. Just proof that you can be stupid and be a billion fucking there. I'm tired of that Simon's ass telling people that they can't sing. I'd fire Donald Trump's ass for knowing every fucking thing. Jim, Brad, and Angelina's ass, I'm about tired of looking at them. And I'm about ready for Hollywood's ass to run out of fucking film. I'm tired of everything on TV. Everybody loves Raymond, except for fucking me. I'm tired of 26 year olds sitting in the full row. They don't know shit about the Jimmy Carter administration and fucking up the comedy show. I'm tired of loud ass women. Who the fuck names a kid Peyton? <laughs> Peyton! Peyton! It's time for dinner! <laughs> Kinda tired of my own ass singing this fucking song. There's a lot of people's ass I'm tired of. Is too fucking long, and I could be wrong. Feliz Navidad! things are happening. One thing I forgot to tell you about earlier was we have our laugh packs on sale and that's a hell of a deal. 30 bucks gets you 10 tickets to come back and see most of our shows. Special events, can't do it, but all these things that we're going to do here at Side Splitters are special events. 30 bucks, 10 tickets. And uh, because I picked on this poor asshole all night, Greggy, that's for you, buddy. Thanks a lot for coming out. <laughs> Gang, I hope you had a good time. If you had a good time, tell your friends you were at Side Splitters. If you didn't have a good time, shut the hell up. One more time for Tim Wilson, gang. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you again. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> 